your report deals uh, extensively with the cost of nuclear energy, and it seems like cost per kilowatt hour is the most uh, appropriate way to compare this to other generation sources, correct? Well, ultimately the bus bar cost is, or the, or the cost per kilowatt hour. So what, what does it cost to deliver an electron to the bus bar at the edge of the plant? Um, and it's really important um, when people talk about cost to talk about everything. I mean, this is one of the, the, the things I try to do in my report is that sometimes the advocates of nuclear power talk about um, the operating costs, which happen to be low. Sometimes they'll talk about the overnight costs, which is a strange concept. Uh, so, sort of like a virtual bond raising is the best way to explain it. What would it cost if I could gather all the factors of production, land, labor, capital, equipment, on the spot and build a plant overnight? It's, 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 it's an interesting concept, but the reason the industry has had to develop this concept is because they really can't build them overnight. They take 10 years to build. And every year you're building, your costs mount up, and you've got finance charges and owner costs. And so you have these three big pieces of cost, operating cost, overnight cost, and then the owner and finance costs, which you incur while you're building. And it's really important to, when people talk about cost, to make sure you're comparing to apples to apples. Um, that said, the bottom line is, what does it cost per kilowatt hour to come out of that plant or inefficiency to save a kilowatt hour um, over the life of the facility. Isn't it fair to say though, Doctor, that, that the costs that you are projecting right now are different than the costs in, say, 10 years where there are large build outs since uh, we are so inexperienced at this process right now and I think you could assume that it would get better and better as both the construction and also the licensing and regulatory processes smooth out and narrow down. No, actually, there's no reason to assume they'll get better and better. Um, uh, and that the experience was that they did not get better and better. And the reason is the following, is that these are mega projects. They're humongous projects where you have a lot of activities that are interconnected. They're sequential and complementary. If this doesn't happen, the next thing can happen. And what happens with very, very complex projects like this is that you get a little slippage over here, that backs up stuff over there, and these delays become interruptions. And they're large-scale human projects, they're site-specific, they're individual, and so there's no reason to assume we'll get better and better because they're inherently extremely difficult. Moreover, this is an industry where the supply chain is very, very tight. Um, for some of the piece parts of these, of these uh, reactors, the big metal uh, foundry stuff, there's one or two foundries in the world who can do it. Japan's too. Um, and, and, but of course, everyone says, well, we're trying to get more. But the supply chain is very tight. Labor is very scarce. American utilities have not built any of these plants in, in uh, over 20 years. And so the interaction of a mega project and a tight su supply chain um, leads one to argue, leads me to argue that the assumption that they'll get better at it over time is not correct. In fact, the more plants they try to build, the slower they may get because they're straining the supply chain and the, the factors of production are not available. So you could delay here. You can't go out someplace else and buy a different part. Um, in fact, in the case of Florida, where one of the utilities has slipped its schedule already by 20 months, they're now negotiating with the vendor who they signed a contract with the payment they have to make to stay in line for the equipment. Because if they say, hey, we're, we want to get out of line, the vendor will go out and try and find another customer for it, and you've got to go back to the end of the line. That doesn't happen with gas turbines. It may happen a little bit with, with uh, wind turbines, right? But the, the, the delay is a few months. These guys are negotiating multi-million dollar payments just to stay in line. That tells you this, that the supply train is really, really stretched thin and tight. Isn't it a very slippery slope from an economic standpoint in that when you get into financing charges, even tiny delays can accrue such large numbers? Yes, I mean, um, uh, the utilities building these plants are not really mercenary institutions. They intend to get paid a return on every dollar of capital and investment that they put down. And so if they put the dollar down this year, they want to 
15% return on it if it's equity. And if that dollar sits waiting before it starts earning a return by producing electrons, the longer it waits, the more they want to be paid. They want, they, they, they want to be paid every year for that. And so as the time goes, as the cost rises, the financing costs dramatically escalate the, the price of these facilities. Uh, is the price per kilowatt hour or the price of the consumers somewhat mitigated or even irrelevant when we're moving toward a low carbon uh, economy? If, if we're not putting a renewable electricity standard in place, we're considering a low carbon standard. Well, the, the, the interesting thing, and again, if you look at the Florida case, the interesting thing is that all of the studies and the utility studies as well as the academic studies, where they sought to justify building reactors, they did so by assuming a price on carbon, a very stiff price on carbon. Because without a big tax on carbon, and whether it's cap and trade or a direct tax, the price of, of burning coal is going to go up, the price of, of burning natural gas is going to go up. So they assumed this really stiff price or tax on carbon, and that made it possible to claim that reactors are competitive with coal because you were paying the tax. The fundamental problem with that is that First of all, you raise the, the, the tax on carbon. Nuclear may be attractive because it's not a carbon emitter, but so is wind. So all of the benefit you claim for nuclear also accrues to wind. Of equal and even greater importance is if you look at American climate change policy, yes, there's a cap and trade in there, but that's not all there is. There's a very aggressive... Uh, efficiency and renewable energy standard. And that's been on the table for a while. The efficiency and en energy renewable standard will dramatically lower demand. Well, that's the demand that these huge reactors are, were intended to meet. So climate policy, on the one hand, makes the low carbon sources look attractive. That means all low carbon sources look attractive. But at the same time, in the US at any rate, our carbon policy is dramatically reducing the demand for these facilities. So again, let me go back to the state of Florida. The two utilities in the state of Florida are proposing to build four reactors. Um, uh, if you look at what has happened to demand as a result of what I call the Great Recession, if you look at their peak projection in just one year, um, look at the peak projection for 2017 between 2008 and 2009, be even a little bit higher for 2007 and 2009. They have reduced their estimate of summer peak demand by 3,500 megawatts. That's the equivalent of three of the four reactors they claim to build. And that doesn't include climate policy. If we assume a 10 or a 20 percent reduction in demand as a result of the climate policy that came out of the House, that's another three to six, the equivalent of another, th of another three to six reactors. So you, now you have these utilities proposing to build four reactors in a state that's lost demand in one year for three of them, and climate policy would, would eliminate demand for another three to six. There's no need for these plants. If we ha and so the bottom line is fascinating. If you think about it, it's the perfect catch-22 for nuclear reactors. If we have climate change legislation, we won't need the plants. And if we don't, we can't afford them. There is no future for nuclear reactors in the United States. 